Ready to deploy a Kubernetes cluster? Well, that's what we're gonna do in these next two videos. We're gonna take a really basic first steps approach to rolling out a Kubernetes cluster, deploying a container on that cluster and accessing it from, well, from our computers, from outside the network. It's gonna be running on the Google Compute Engine or the Google Kubernetes Engine. So we're gonna to need to expose it to the public internet in order, in order for us to access it from our computers. But I'm gonna walk you through that and show you how to do that. And we're gonna do that with this particular bit of documentation here. I'm largely gonna follow along with the quick start guide from Google's documentation. You can find this at cloud.google.com, whack kubernetes-engine forward slash docs and click on the quick start link, or that will take you right here to the same URL forward slash quick start. And that is going to, uh, it's gonna cover all the documentation, all the commands that we are walking through here. So if your system or your setup is a little bit different than what I'm showing, well, you can follow the documentation along there and reference what exactly we're doing. Now, in order to make sure we understand what a Kubernetes deployment is, let's talk a little bit about or rehash a little bit about what Google Kubernetes Engine does for us. Kubernetes Engine, GKE, allows us to create a Google managed Kubernetes deployment. And remember that Kubernetes deploys containers, which is also called pods, across multiple nodes, which are the virtual machines. GKE is going to manage and maintain everything for us outside of the software that's inside of the containers. That's the only thing that we really need to be responsible for when we talk about a GKE deployment. We are going to build our software into the containers and deploy those containers to some registry somewhere, an artifact registry like Google Artifact Registry, and then GKE will pull it down from there, deploy it on the pods as needed, and its auto scaling and load balancing will ensure that it runs the appropriate number of copies of those pods. It gives efficient distribution of the pods across all of the different nodes that are inside of our cluster. We really don't have to manage or maintain any of that. We can let Google Kubernetes handle it all. So that is what we are going to do here. We're going to get a container and have that container deployed for us across one or more nodes. Now there's a lot of vocabulary that goes into Kubernetes Engine. If you have not worked with Kubernetes, if you have not worked with containers, a lot of this vocabulary is going to be new, but I think the basic concepts should be relatively straightforward and understandable. First of all, we're gonna deal with a cluster. The cluster is the entire group of computers that is running our Kubernetes Engine deployment. A cluster is made up of one or possibly more control plane computers. This is the, the boss of the cluster. The control plane computer is the one that's in charge of everything else. It's gonna deploy our pods onto the nodes. It's going to scale up and scale down the nodes. The control plane machine is doing everything for us. And then that control plane machine has one or more nodes, worker nodes that are actually running our pods. So the nodes are the virtual machines, the compute engine virtual machines that are running inside of our cluster. And our cluster is all of those machines together controlled by a control plane. Now we've also got what are called pods. And pods, uh, you'll probably hear me using them a little bit interchangeably with containers. And for the most part, they really are interchangeable. Ideally, you're gonna have a one container per pod scenario. So every container that you wanna deploy is in one pod, and then every pod only runs one and container at a time. You can get more complex and have multiple containers inside of a pod. They are distinct and separate for a reason. In order to keep things simple for yourself, I would recommend that you stick to a one container per pod deployment and you do that so that you can uh, you can maintain in your head at least that pods and containers are kind of the same thing. So pods, the containers are the actual workload, the application that's getting deployed onto the different compute engine nodes. The deployment is what controls the deployment of those pods. So it knows where to get the original container image from and it does the actual execution, the startup of the pod on the nodes. And then lastly, we're gonna run something called a service. The service is going to expose this to the broader internet so that we can access our containers, we can access our pods from our local computer over the internet. And that is exactly what we are going to do in our next video. We're gonna jump down to our command line and we are going to run the commands to deploy a new cluster with a specified number of nodes. Then we will deploy an application, a container on that cluster, and we'll see how we can actually access and expose that application to the public internet and view it from our web browser. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.